praise Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You consign Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. We are serving a living God. Our God is a merciful God. Our God is holy God. And our God is a righteous God. Amen. Today I'm here to discuss with you and to tell you about knowing your enemy. Your enemy is not the next person near to you. No. Your enemy is not your neighbor. Your, not, your enemy is not your family member or your colleague or your boss. Your enemy is the devil. Amen. So I'm here to share with you today, hoping that you get the word of God, that you can give your life to Jesus Christ. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. I have a prayer story for you in the Bible, how Jesus Christ was tempted and also how Adam was tempted. So we can see the two contrasts. And most of us are going through the same thing today. You might think by now, more than 2,000 years ago, Christ came and died. By now, we should be a bit wise and to learn from him how he defeated the devil with his tricks. Amen? So this is the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 1. And the Bible says, And Jesus Christ, full with the Holy Spirit, returned for Judea, Jordan and was led in the spirit in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted by the devil and he ate nothing during those days and when they were ended he was hungry and the devil said to him if you are the son of God command these stones to become bread and Jesus answered him it is written man shall not live by bread alone you see devil is very clever there are three things in this temptation here today it's not different from what you are going today in your life three things is what the three categories is what the first one is your appetite your eyes and the pride of life and because of these three categories devil have deceived a lot of people and move a lot of people away from God you see, when devil came to Jesus Christ, let me say one thing concerning devil. The Bible called him is a liar from the beginning. He's the father of all liars. So that means there's nothing, there's no truth in devil. Devil is real. Amen. Devil is real, and we know devil is your enemy. You see, most of us have fell for devil. Some of us are still doing that today. Devil will continue to use you if you do not run to Jesus Christ. Amen. So what happens between Adam and Eve and the devil is quite amazing, isn't it? The same thing that he tempted Jesus Christ in the book of Luke chapter 4, it is the same thing that happens in Genesis chapter 3. You see, the Bible says now the Satan was more crafty still the same today more than any other beast in the field that the lord god has made and he said to the woman did god actually say you shall not eat any tree in the garden and the woman said to the satan we may eat the fruit of the tree in the garden but god said you shall not eat the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden neither shall you touch it lest you die the same thing is happening today you can never have a conversation with devil. That is the first thing you learn. Amen? There's no point having a conversation with somebody who is smarter than you. Devil is smarter than every one of us living here in this life. That is why there are so many wars, so many crimes, because he is the God of this world. You see? When Adam and Eve fell, it's because Eve wants to be wise. And her eyes was focusing to eating that tree that is going to make her to do what? To be wise. You ask yourself in your life today, is there any tree, is there any fruit that you have been tempted to touch? 
because that could be the same thing that happened to Adam is happening in your life today and that is why many of us today have moved away from living God and basically serving the devil the Bible says the serpent said to the woman you shall not surely die you see when God says don't do something that when you do it you will die then why are you listening to the devil you see you can only have two you can only have one master amen so if and adam even though they have the most precious fruit in the garden just only one fruit that god tell them not to eat it because god was saving them for one for knowing the truth the knowledge of good and evil but if and adam they disobey god and since they disobey god we bear the consequences today and that is why there are so many crimes so many evil going around the world and the devil said to to eve for god knows that when you eat of it your eyes will open how many of you today after you have cheated on your husband or your wife your eyes will open isn't it and then you will say i'm sorry it was the devil that made me to do that we remember about bill clinton all life for some couple of months after he was being caught and he said he was sorry the same way the same devil is still applying today in the life of those who refuse to submit to the lordship of jesus christ because if you notice one thing after you sin your eyes will open because that time devil have already deceived you he's a master of deception isn't it and i continue he said when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delight in eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wife she took of his fruit and ate it and not only that she also gave it to her husband who was with her and he ate the same thing today your friends might tell you let's go to a party and they will buy drugs and they want to share that same with you the same way your friends will take you to pop you get drunk and they want to pass the same drink to you that's what happened eve was sharing her sin to her husband you see so that's why the bible says, do not be equally yoked with unbelievers amen whoever that is your friend today is going to determine your destination at the end of the day you see and that is why the bible says separate from them amen because the light have no business with what darkness so i'm here to talk about knowing your enemy do you know your enemy that's a question you need to answer for yourself today you that are making your way to work or coming back from work do you know your enemy that's what the bible says there's three things the devil can only tempt you in this life just as he tempted Adam and Eve, the one was God, good for food. The second one was delight to the eyes and desire to make one wise. Does this apply to you today in your life? You have to focus on this. Because Apostle John says in the first John chapter 2 verse 16, he said, for all that is in the world, the desires of flesh and the desires of eyes and the pride of life, is not from the father but is from this world so everything that you are looking at now and the things that you want to touch the things that you want to eat and the things that you think is going to give you pride in life is not from god it's from the devil and if we get this wisdom we see how apostle john outlined this category of sin of what loss of flesh loss of eyes and the and the pride of life you see so to think about it anything that you are desired today you think it's gonna make you wise is the same trick that the devil have played in the garden of eden and if and adam they fell for him you see so where are you focusing your eyes that's the question you need to ask yourself because the bible tells us to focus our eyes on jesus christ who is the author and finisher of our faith you see bless you sir so where is your eyes focusing are your eyes focusing on the wrong thing that you shouldn't be looking at child of god the bible tells you if your eye is gonna make you to go to hell he said remove that your eyes 
means don't look at the things that you shouldn't be looking at you see so knowing your devil is very very knowing your enemy the devil is very important because devil use the same temptation you see everything goes in these three categories loss of flesh loss of the eyes and the pride of life you see so there's nothing new amen he might come in a different way to kind of define it for you to make you to move away from god it is the same thing three things in this life is your eyes your appetite what are you hungry to eat your pride you see the bible say if pride go before you your fan, your downfall follows and i also included this pride go before you your destruction follows amen because of pride many people have moved away from faith many christians have run away from god because they want to comply to the standard of this world but the bible have warned me and you not to even go that way so you can see the same way devil tempted adam and eve the same way he came to tell our jesus christ the bible says in the book of luke chapter 4 verse 3 the devil said to him if you are the son of god command this stone to become bread you see he know that jesus christ had power but he didn't even know that he was actually the son of god because he said if you are the son of god command this bread to become stone you see so the devil always know when when you are really hungry amen i don't know about you i remember the first time i done my first fasting one day i can guarantee you after two two o'clock in the afternoon i just went back to eat the food and after that day i said to god i'm really sorry i'm not gonna do that again you see everything is baby step when you do fasting you're gonna be really hungry because you wanna eat that's the time the devil will show you the best burgers in the tv or maybe driving by you can see the best chicken wings of kfc just right there in the post advertising that's the same way the devil is telling jesus christ to command the stones to turn them to bread and we know that jesus christ was very hungry because when you fasted for 40 days and 40 nights definitely you are starving you want to eat i mean if i were jesus christ i want to eat the whole madonna's because you are hungry isn't it but we know how jesus christ answered him so what devil does in our life is very terrible isn't it he makes suggestions for us and that's why the bible call him a deceiver he deceives us you see and make us to focus in our needs instead of focus the needs of god so let me ask you today you walking past or you walk watching life what is your need what are you focusing on right now is the devil making you to focus on one thing that you shouldn't be focusing on anything that you put your eyes your heart your mind and your soul to focus on if it's not jesus christ you have been deceived amen you have been deceived because the devil only give you suggestions to focus on the wrong things the devil never give you suggestion to pay your tithe. the devil never give you suggestion to pray when you wake up in the morning they never never give you the suggestion to to worship god you see to do the right thing to be on the right side of god the devil can never give you that suggestion what the devil does is this he gives you suggestions to move you away from the word of god from the life of jesus christ to move you away to do the right thing that you need to do we all know the right thing that we need to do just as apostle paul says you know the right thing to do but if you don't do it for you it is a sin you see so the devil have deceived if deceived adam and both of them fell for him he tried on jesus christ he failed amen he fell because jesus christ knows the scripture you see he wrote the scriptures amen that reminds me when jesus christ quoted exactly what was in the uh, deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3 
and God said, humble your, God humble you and let you hunger and fill you with manna, which you did not know, neither your fathers know, that they might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's the correct answer. When Jesus Christ answered devil, you see, for it's written, man shall not eat by bread alone, but every word that come out from the mouth of the God. Amen. Let me ask you today, what is your biggest desire? What is your biggest need? Because that's gonna determine where you're gonna end up in life. Is your desire is to please your flesh? Is your desire is to just eat all the time? Do you know that you're overeating is sin? You see? Is your desire is to sleep with someone's wife or husband? Is your desire is to have sex outside marriage? What is your desire? What do you desire in life? Is your desire you wake up this morning to go and get drunk? Is your desire to have drugs, smoking habits? What is your desire? Because your greater desire is going to determine where you're going to end up in your life. You see? So, Jesus Christ quoted the Bible back to Satan. You know? You see, in this life that we are living, we are going to be tempted. And if the devil find any weak point in your life, he will continue to use it to his own advantage. But I can guarantee you, if your eyes focus on Jesus Christ and you put your faith on the finished work of Jesus Christ, there is no way the devil is going to have dominion over your life. Because you trusted the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He look after you. Amen. So Jesus Christ stands firm on the word of God. And that is why anytime you've been tempted, you must know the word of God and apply it in your life. That's also goes when you pray. You pray with the word of God to make your prayer be effective. You see? So devil failed. And that is why me and you need to hang on on every the word of Jesus Christ. Not on food. Not on bread. You see, this bread could mean many things. It could mean you focusing your eyes on your car. Do you know that some people spend so much time in their car, they won't even have time to pray. Whatever that you focus your eyes on is your God. Amen? And that is why I'm here today to encourage you through the word of Jesus Christ. Amen? I've been coming here since past. This is my fourth day here. I know two people have already heading towards to the kingdom of God because I have a wonderful conversation day before yesterday with one lady and she gave her life to God. You could be that the same person today. Amen? There's nothing difficult for Jesus Christ to do. I finished work. I came back work. I came here straight away because I'm motivated to do what? To serve my living God. 17 years ago, I couldn't have been here. I was in the club. You know? Satisfy my flesh. You see? But when you give your life to God, there must be a changes in your life. There must be a changes. You see? So what is your greatest need? That's my question to you. Your greatest need is going to lead you where you're going to end up your life. Is your greatest need? Is it woman? You can never get enough. Amen? There was a man in the Bible. His name is King Solomon. The Bible says, have seven dead wives and turn their concubine. Looking at it today, you might call him his sense addition. Isn't it? He was addicted to say because how can you have 1,000 wives? You see? But you as a child of God, everything that was written in the Bible is to direct you so that you don't do the same mistake. You don't live in sin, just like the people in the past. You see? What is your greatest need? Is your need is to have houses? Is that your need? There's a thing that God done in this life. It can only be in one place at a time. It can never be in two rooms at the same time. You cannot divide yourself. And that is the wisdom of God. And that is why you should be content with what you have. You see? You have 10 cars. It can only be in one car at a time. What is your need? 
What is your need? What do you what do you desire most in this life? What do you want to get out of life? You want to go to party every day, every weekend, work Monday to Friday, and then weekend you're gonna give account of your money to the clubs and pubs. Is that your need? Is your need is to show off? Is that your need? You see, whatever is your need, the Bible said. My God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus Christ. Amen. My need is to serve Jesus Christ and that's why I'm here today. That is my need. I just want to please God. I'm not interested in any money. I don't even need it. Because I know before I open my mouth to pray, my prayer has already been answered. And that's advantage of being what? Putting your faith in Jesus Christ because when the devil tempted Jesus Christ, he failed. He failed. Amen. He knows. He just like I'm turned the whole building here to become a bride. But he didn't do it. Because if he had done that, by today, me and you can never lie on him. You see? Whatever is your need, your most need is to do what? To hang your faith, your life on the work, on the word of Jesus Christ, on the work that he has done finish at the cross of calvary nothing else should matter in this life amen god must always confess that's why the bible says first seek the kingdom of god and all his righteousness and everything else will be added added unto you so what is your first need in life is he chasing after woman is he chasing after money is he chasing after material things some people their needs might be to shop in the morning, just shop in different kind of clothes. You can never get enough. The next day you're gonna see someone with something else. You wanna go and get it. The same way with the people with the car. You drive one today, the next day another one. You have a mobile phone. The next day the Apple produce another one. What is your need? You see? The Bible calls it chasing after the wind. You can never catch the wind. It's like a dog chasing after his tail. It's not going to happen. You can never run after your. You can never run more than your shadow. You see, your need is to serve your God, your Maker, who is Jesus Christ. Amen. It shouldn't be anything else. Everything else is from the devil. Amen. So that is why Jesus Christ defeated the devil in the first encounter because he was telling him to turn stone to become bread and just Christ said to him as is written that man shall not live by bread alone but from the every word that come out from the mouth of jesus christ the mouth of god the king of kings and the lord of law and that is why i'm here today to encourage you to put your needs make your needs to be the priority is to what the Bible says in the book of Matthew 6, 33, first seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and every other things will be added. He said will be added. You don't need to ask for it. You see, we are serving a God. We are not a beggars to God. He already know our needs. God know your heart. Amen. And if you as a child of God move away from faith, devil have dominion over you. You see? God knows our heart. The Bible says God is bigger than your heart. Amen. And that is why this encounter between Jesus Christ and Satan was very, very good. You see? Because he can see the contrast between Adam and Jesus Christ. Amen. And that is why I'm here today to encourage you. So that you can do what? Give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. So what is the second one? Devil tempted Jesus Christ. Devil came to him and said, this is Luke chapter 4 verse 5. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and the glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I will give it to who I will, if you then worship me, and it will be yours. You see, the devil is very clever, isn't it? And there's a statement that he made there that just Christ did not dispute. Do you know that the devil have is the king is the is the god of this world is the small g god of this world amen just as the bible prove it you see the devil is the god of this world and that is why we can never be smarter than him look at what's going around the world look at crime 
evil lifestyle, war, persecution against Christians, Christophobia going around. The devil has been busy. You know how many times the devil have made me to come here for more than 17 years. He's been tying me down. I spend my time in clubs and pubs and bars. You see? And that is why you have to be careful and know who you are dealing with. He's smarter than you. But guess what? His time is limited. Just very tiny, 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 tiny time you have in this life. If you run to Jesus Christ today, you will have victory over the devil. You see? Jesus Christ answered him. It is written. You see, you must always go back to the word of God. He said it's written. You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Amen. What can you tell me today? What definitely is showing you to you now? That your eyes looking at that you want to you are desire you want to have is the devil is deceiving you. Are you a young girl? Devil is showing you handsome man, devil is deceiving you. Are you a handsome man? Devil, devil showing you beautiful girl. He deceiving you. You see, you love her so much. Go and marry her. You see, you know what I mean. The other one, one of uh, one of my sisters, obviously. Um, I don't want to name her. And she was saying, um, so I had to do with safe sex. I said, what do you mean by safe sex? Show me why it is in the Bible says safe sex. The safe sex you're gonna get is what. Marriage between man and woman, safe sex is for the couples only. So if you're a young girl sleeping around, the Bible called it sin, fornication, amen? And that is why you need to use your body to glorify God and not pleasing your flesh, amen? And that is why you should stay away. If you're a young woman, stay away. If you're not married, stay away from man, amen? Ask God, he's going to provide for you. Just as God provide um, Eve to Adam. You want to get married? Any woman God did not bring to you, stay away from her. Amen? And that is why I'm here today to encourage you. Who are you worshipping? Just as the devil had the mind to Jesus Christ to worship him. If you spend so much time in the gym, you are worshipping the gym. Amen? You want to chisel out? Listen. Get this word of wisdom today. You are from the dust. You're going to return back to dust. No matter how you try to make yourself to look, at the end of the day, we're all going to go back to the ground. You see? Why are you spending so much time in the gym? Most of us haven't even got time to read the word of God to actually find out what God says about you, about himself, so that we can serve him. So everything that you put in this life, ahead of God, you are worshiping that. What is made of worship? If you, if your desire is to spend time every time in the pub, you are worshiping the pub. You are worshiping the drink. Is your desire to smoke? You are worshiping the cigarette. Is your desire to spend 24 hours on your mobile phone? You are worshiping that. That's what they call worship. But Apostle Paul tell me and in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 1. He said it appealed to us to use our body as a living sacrifice. Which will be our special worship to God. Amen. And that is why I'm here today to encourage you. You see. To move away from anything that will make you know to serve God. Amen. You need to get this word of wisdom. Just as I said earlier on. Devil can only try you three times. Three strikes. And if he fails, you have victory because the Bible says what? Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will free from you. Amen. If you don't submit to God, the devil will have dominion over you. You cannot tell the devil, go away. It's not going to go away. He knows your weak point. Amen. He's going to bring in all those things that always enticing you to move away from your faith. He's going to continue showing it to you. Even though when you don't want to say it, the devil is very skillful. You see? The same way he deceived Adam and Eve, the same way he's still deceiving this world that we are living. And that is why many of us have drifted away from faith. Amen? So get this word of wisdom today and know whatever, anything that you are spending your time on, 
you are worshiping that. Amen. Because just Christ said to him, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God in him alone you should serve. So what are you serving today? Where do you spend your time on? Because anything you spend your time on, you might be serving that. Some people work, some people work many jobs, never get time to spend with God or even with their family. You are serving your boss, you are serving your your work, and that's your God. And that is why Apostle Paul appealed to us to use our body as a living sacrifice unto God. Amen. Devil owns this world. You know this? Devil is the ruler of this world, the small g God of this world. The Bible proves, it, proves this in the book of John 12, verse 31. He said the ruler of this world had been cast out. Why devil is the ruler of this world? We know what happened in the Garden of Eden. Man gave devil the kingdom. When God created Adam and Eve, he said have dominion over everything. He said multiply. And that man had the dominion. But when you come to Genesis chapter 3, the fall of man, ever since that time, devil is the god of this world just look around you what's happening around you in this life a lot of crazy people doing crazy things devil have dominion over their life and if we realize this today just as the bible have warned us that is why some people will come to me and tell me if god is so good why let this happen i'm just saying it lack wisdom god can never let anything happen Sometimes God do let some things happen, I understand that. But we need to know one thing for sure in this life. Devil is the ruler of this world. He's ruler of this world. He's making people to disobey God. He's making children to be rude to their parents. He's making parents to drift away. You can see some parents that have children and then they leave them and they run away. What a shame. And that is why, look at the society. You have foster children, you see? Look at the society, you got women making an abortion, which is killing another person, which she shouldn't do, Bible warn us. In the book of Jeremiah chapter one, verse five, he said, I know you before you are being formed. So why are you aborting that baby? If you are hearing the word of God coming off my mouth, if you wanna do that today, do not even try it, amen? You are killing somebody else. I know the society have make it to call it poor life, poor choice, whatever. Anything you like, you call it. God just want to do. A sanity of life is scared for God. Don't take someone's life. Amen. So devil have been busy, and I can tell you one thing for sure. Devil is very clever. His wisdom is the worldly wisdom. You see. And many of us have been falling for it far too long. That is why the society, we are in big mess because devil have taken over control. But I'm here today to tell you to the word of God. Just as the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. In their in their case, the God of this world, you know, the Bible small G God has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Jesus Christ who is the image of God that's what the devil does if you hear the word of God you feel offended about it devil have blinded your mind you are seeing but you are spiritually blind amen if I ask you to close your eyes for 10 seconds do you know how dark it is that is the same way many of us today devil have blind our eyes blind our ears blind our heart so that we can never hear the word of god and that is why i have so much crime in this society the government can never help it do you know why because the devil is in charge you see everything have to start with family you marry a woman the bible says stay with her don't depart from her amen if they will deceive you you depart from her and then she's alone with the children and that is why the society have gone from right to the left. Everything starts with family. When God created Adam and Eve, it was a family. It's a family time. 
the family should be united, united as one. You see, Jesus Christ says, any kingdom that divides itself can never stand. And that is the problem we have today in the society because the devil have blinded minds and the heart of many people and most of us have fallen away from our faith. Amen. But I'm here today to encourage you to the word of God. Amen. Never let the devil to deceive you. The Bible says he comes to do what? To steal the word of God. You are coming out from my mouth. And to kill you and to destroy you. That's what the devil comes to do. Nothing more, nothing less. And that is why we the children of God. We should move away from the devil. Amen. We should move away from him. We shouldn't let him control you. You see? Devil have no power over my life anymore. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 says that in which you are once once walked, following the curse of this world and following the prince of the, the power of the air, the spirit that is not at work in the sons of disobedience. Are you a disobedient children? Devil have dominion over you. You don't listen to your parents. Devil have dominion over you. My son said something the other day. I said to him, you know what the Bible says? Be kind. That's what the Bible says. Be kind. And he touched him so much. The next three days, he never forget that word. We should be kind to one another. Amen. The prince of the power of the air is called Satan. And that is why what the TV shows. There are a lot of shows that are showing that so disgusting to even think about. Man kissing man, woman kissing woman. What a shame. You see, devil have been so busy. You see, most of us spend time watching Netflix. I used to be one of them. I used to spend 17, 16 hours on the shows. Once there's a new season, I just want to finish it. Walking Dead, or whatever they call it these days. Games of Thrones. Any show that you watch and there's no word of God being preached or being spoken, I will tell you, depart from it. Amen. Depart from it. Can you imagine me as a child of God here preaching to you? Start hearing people cursing, swearing. If I'm here to preach, at some point it's going to come out from my mouth. Anything that you put your mind into and it goes into your ears, your ears is the most important organ in your body. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Jesus Christ. So if you are not hearing the word of Jesus Christ and you are hearing the word of devil, and that is why the things that you hear, once it's settled in your heart, you want to practice it. And that is why many people are practicing sin, living in sin. Do you know homosexuality is a sin? Do you know gay and lesbian is a sin? Do you know that? Do you know drunkenness is a sin? God bless you, sir. Do you know sleeping around is a sin? Do you know drinking is a sin? Do you know smoking is a sin? Anything that contaminates your body, that the Bible says you should live soberly, it is a sin. And the Bible says, well, depart from meat. You see? Move away from meat and then come to Jesus Christ. Amen? And that is why I'm here today to encourage you through the word of God. Can I help you, man? Sorry? You cannot talk with this. You want to speak to me? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I want to read the Bible. Sorry? I want your Bible. Do you need a Bible? Yes. You want Bible? Yeah. Okay, if I finish, just wait. If I finish, I can go to my car and give you one Bible. Where do you go to church? I can give you a church leaflet. You need a flyer? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to give your life to God? You want to give your life to God? Okay. Um, so, it's in Water Star Academy. It's, it's there. Is it not there? It's Water Star Academy, primary school. I'll give it, I'll give it address. Wait. Wait another one, yeah. Uh, it starts, I can write it for you. Have you got a pen? No. Okay, I'm, I'm going to write it for you, okay? Just. Just uh, just wait a moment, okay? I'm gonna hold this, okay? I'm gonna write it for you. Uh, okay, write write down your your name, and then I will call you. And my pastor will speak with you, okay? So write down your 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 name, your number, your address. Amen. So 
in this life that we are living, if you don't give your life to God, you give your life to Satan. You see? We all serving one thing another. And let me tell you something. Like I said before, homosexuality is a sin. Amen? No two ways about that. You see? If fornication is a sin, drunkenness is a sin. There's a lot of things that you are living now, you think you are enjoying yourself. I can guarantee you one thing. A time we come, the Bible says, well, after death comes what? Judgment. You see? So you think you're having a good time now? Okay. Um, I will call you, okay? God bless you. That's why I'm here today. I want people to give their life to God. Every time I come here, I always get one or two people giving their life to God. And it gives me joy that I have to finish my work and I come here and I'm fired up. God bless you, sir. I'm fired up to preach the word of God. Amen. It motivates me when people give their life to Jesus Christ. Amen. I can guarantee you the heaven, thousands of angels rejoicing when someone gives their life to God. Amen. So the Bible says in the book of Revelation 11 verse 5, then the seventh angel blow his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of this world have become the kingdom of the Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever just look up that's how God is God is far away from us do you know why because of sin he give us social distances talking about social distances God give us the biggest social distances he stay away from us and that is why I advise but rejoicing if anytime you see him he should give you two weeks for you get your mind right, it will bring you back to the society. Police can't help us. They can try their best. They can never stop saying. You see? The only thing that can save you today is the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing else. Not Muhammad. Not Buddha. Not atheist. Not anything that you can imagine. Jesus Christ say, He is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? The blood of Jesus Christ can set you free. Every other religion, apart from Christ, is just man-made. Amen? You know, man likes to make different things. You see? Try to divide people from the, from the blood of Jesus Christ and from the message of Jesus Christ. Amen? And that is why you need to give your life to God today. Because a time we come, God is going to demand your soul. Your soul is precious for him that you have to send his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. And the Bible said, whosoever believes in him will not perish. Perish means in hell, but to do what? Have internal life. And that internal life is only found in Jesus Christ. Amen. And that is why the Bible says, the God of this world, this mighty God, have blinded the minds of unbelievers. But the Bible says, when Jesus Christ comes with his angels, he's going to unite the earth and the heaven together. They will become one. Amen. Just as it was before from the beginning. You see? And that time is coming. Do you know that Jesus Christ is coming soon? Do you know that? Because when you wash, you know, one thing that about good in this country was they bring Christianity to Africa. But I can guarantee you now, this country has moved away from Christianity. I wish it's a shame. My grandfather was an idol worshiper, and thank God the British came and colonized Nigeria and I'm so grateful for that you know before I used to get mad why did they come and do all these things but that's a, that's a purpose in life for everything but this society that came to preach the gospel news to Nigerians to all Africans and all over the world they have turned upside down you see do you know your, your prosperity could be your cause do you know how many people these days in Africa are running to God because of the word of God that was being preached by your great great grandfathers. I'm not talking about the slave trade ones, but your great great grandfather, they preached the good news. And most of us today are benefited from it. And it's quite amazing that when I move away from faith, my mother have to come from Nigeria just to take me to Shashia, which pains me so much. And after she passed away, 
Um, I, I realized what she had done, and I gave my life to God. She left thousands of miles just to take me to church. That is what they call role model. 50 Cent is not a role model. Beyonce is not a role model. All these pop stars can never be a role model to you. You can find role model in the parents. The Bible says a parent should brought up their children the way they should grow. And they will never depart from it. Amen? So who is your role model today? Let me ask you. Who is your role model? Is all this soap operas? Is all these TV shows? Forget about them. They can only lead to the wrong way. Your role model is Jesus Christ. You can pick Moses. You can pick Abraham. You can pick Esther. You can pick Daniel. You can pick anyone in the Bible. You can pick Apostle Paul. You can pick anyone. Just watch their life. They are your role models. Nobody else. You see? And that is why I'm here to encourage you. So that you can come to your God. We is your maker. Jesus Christ. And don't let the devil deceive you. Because so many of us have been led, have been led away by the deception of the devil. And that is why today the Bible is warning you. You should bear good fruit and keep on with repentance. Just as John the Baptist says, produce fruit. What kind of fruit are you producing? Anything outside the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Anything outside it is the fruit of the devil. Amen? God bless you, man. It's the fruit of the devil. Why is it because it's the fruit of the devil? Because the devil likes to show you, just as he showed Eve in the Garden of Eden, shiny things. Not everything that greets us is good. Amen? The Bible says it appears like an angel of light, but it is devil. You see? What kind of fruit the society is producing these days? That's why you have too many divorces in the society. There are so many crimes. That's the fruit of the devil. You see? Understand that when just why I say produce good fruit. Do you know that when you look at the tree, you can never see the root? Do you know who is that root? I am rooted in Christ Jesus. If you are not rooted in Christ Jesus Christ, your fruit is going to be fruit of uh, deception, disobedience, anger, livery, malice, gossip, cursing. All this lifestyle that you are living that do not give God the glory. You have been deceived. And someone who is having dominion over you is the devil. Amen. And that is why the Bible says, well, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent men take it by force. You must force your way into the kingdom of God. Amen. Do you know that laziness is a sin? Do you know that eating too much is a sin? You see? Do you know that sleeping too long is a sin? You see? Your time is to do what? Devote your time to worship God. Amen. Most of us have time to watch TV shows, have time to do different things, but none of us have time to actually praise God. Amen. And that is why I'm determined to give my time to God. I've given my time so much, many years in the club, dancing, we let the dance out. Act like a fool. Many of us act like a fool that time. Some of them are still bearing the fruit of that acting like a fool. Some of them are still in the prison. You see? I was preaching yesterday in Lettingston Station. One guy just came out from prison. Do you know what I saw in his hand? He was holding the Gideon Bible. I was so dancing. I was so happy. Because it's sometimes it's good for God to discipline us. Amen? Going to prison is not bad for him. He committed a crime, he go to prison, and he find God. You see, sometimes it's good for God to take most people to prison so that they can come to their senses. They have so much good time doing different things, you see, because he was producing the wrong fruits. And that's why I'm here today, to encourage you. Are you going through a tough time in your life? Good for you, because sometimes it's good to go through tough time so that you can give your life to God. The Bible says through trials and tribulations, we make it into the kingdom of God. Amen? It's a long journey, and it's not an easy way. The Bible said the road is narrow, and only few people follow it. Why is it few people follow it? 
because only few people see the light of God. Amen. But the road that is broad leads to what? Leads to hell. And many follow it. Why many follow it? Because people like to follow other people's. Are you living by somebody's opinion? Are you following anybody because you like them more than God? You love them more than God? The word of God said he came to bring salt between father and, and, and son and son and mother and mother-in-law and father-in-law. You see? And that is why when I give my life to God, most of my family, they didn't agree with me. But look at me today. And looking back two years ago, I did the right thing. You see? I don't live by your opinion. I couldn't care less. I care what Jesus Christ thinks about me. Amen? I'm not here to please man. I'm here to do the work of my father. You are going to your job. I am here doing my own job. And there's a fulfillment to serving the Lord. Amen? You see the lady over there giving flyers? She's doing the same thing. We are working in the kingdom of heaven and because our reward is in heaven. Amen? And I know where my reward is. You should also find where your reward is because all of us in a field. Amen? And in this field, the seed that's been planted in that field is the word of God that you are hearing today. You walking past today or sitting down, it's not a coincidence for you to hear the word of God. Many of you never hear the word of God for many years. Most of you have been sleeping far too long. Wake up from your slumber. The Bible says, wake up a sleeper and let Christ shine in you. Amen? If Christ is not shining in you, the devil have dominion over you. And because the devil have dominion over you, that is why the Bible calls you the sons of disobedience. Amen? God bless you, sir. Take a picture of my family. Uh, I'm preaching. You can give it to someone else. Oh, I'll yeah. be to you the whole time. Yeah. So, God bless you, sir. Amen? So, that's why I'm here. To encourage you. Amen? So that you can give your life to God. Amen? And I hope the word of God is loud and clear. Remember, blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless you, man.